And we begin with the scramble for second and the war of words exchanged in the third Republican debate. The five candidates on the stage trading fire in a debate largely dominated by foreign policy, but punctuated by moments of personal jabs, as we showed you there between Haley and Ramaswamy. Now, rivals are duking it out on the stage. The front runner in the race, meantime, Donald Trump, holding a rally just miles away. So joining us from that debate site in Miami is NBC's Maura Barrett. Von Hilliard is standing by with the latest from that Trump rally. And Shaquille Brewster in Iowa hearing directly from the voters. Maura, quite a show last night. Walk us through the big moments. Well, Anna, like you mentioned, foreign policy was definitely a top point of conversation. This was the first time that these five candidates were all together on stage since the Israel-Hamas war broke out in early October. And they, they both, they all voiced uh, similar opinions on how they would handle Hamas. I want you to hear directly immediately about how they address the question and how they would be handling it if they were in the White House. I would be telling Bibi, finish the job once and for all. The first thing I said to him when it happened was I said, finish them. Wipe Hamas off of the map. So a lot of agreement on stage about how to handle that conflict, but there was a lot of differentiation in terms of funding towards Ukraine, whether that should be tied to funding uh, to Israel, because Nikki Haley made the point uh, that there should be a larger goal of shoring up uh, alliances uh, in terms of the larger goal of, of, of global democracies. But you did see some differentiation where uh, Ron DeSantis said that he would actually not send U.S. troops to Ukraine. He would rather focus on the issues down at the southern border with Mexico. Ramaswamy also disagreeing with Haley. Uh, on your, her Ukraine point, and overall, there was an agreement as well on China being a national security issue. And so, this debate, compared to other debates, it gave a lot of runway for candidates to get into the nitty gritty of issues like these, especially as we're getting into the last two months leading up to the Iowa caucus, where these candidates are really trying to differentiate themselves. Anna, Maura, thank you so much. So, Vaughn, what happened at that Trump rally last night? What did we hear from him? Yeah, good morning, Anna. Donald Trump, by and large, almost completely ignored the debate last night and his five Republican rivals. Of course, this was the third debate that he chose to skip, making the case as to why would he give any credence to any of his other Republican rivals when he is leading by such significant margins in the polls nationally, but also in these key early states. I want to let you listen to Donald Trump, though, in his quick acknowledgement of the debate that was happening just 10 miles down the road from where he was holding that counter rally. Take a listen. Somebody said, oh, some one of those dumber ones. He doesn't have the courage to stand up. Well, listen, I'm standing in front of tens of thousands of people right now, and it's on television. That's a hell of a lot harder to do than a debate. I'm told that Donald Trump intends to skip the fourth debate in Alabama here in December as well. A senior advisor to Donald Trump, when I asked him, you know, where does this go from here? Does Donald Trump want these other candidates to drop out? He said, of course. He feels like the Republican primary is over and that the Republican Party should coalesce its money and its support around Donald Trump to focus on Joe Biden. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the current governor of Arkansas, formally endorsed Donald Trump last night at the rally. Don Jr. was there as well. I asked one of those advisors to Donald Trump after the rally about those who are waiting on the sidelines. Of course, this comes just days after Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds endorsed Ron DeSantis. And that advisor's response to me about those Republicans uh, uh, who are waiting on the sidelines to endorse Donald Trump, and his response to me was, quote, tick-tock. Really, Donald Trump intends over the next few months to put the pressure on Republicans nationally to get on board now or perhaps you know, face the perils of not having Donald Trump's support were he to get in the White House again. Anna. All right. Fun. Thank you. Shaq, how are Republican voters reacting to last night's debate? Well, Anna, we are here in Iowa. This, of course, is the first place where voters will get to have their say in this Republican primary process. And we kind of crashed a party last night that was being held by the group, uh, Iowa chapter of the Americans for Prosperity just to see how folks were reacting to the debate in real time. I want you to listen to one of the conversations I had after the debate, because this really shows you how dynamic this race is, where, yes, former President Trump, if you look at polling, is ahead, but you have voters in real time still making some of those decisions. Trump is a different person yeah, than he was in 2016. So he's uh, more focused on his own issues 
and then saying that uh, but they're going to come after you after they come after me yeah. but he's actually more focused on his own issues instead of keeping that private and focusing on Joe Biden's failed policies. Despite that you're still considering voting for him in the caucus? Um, I love what Trump did. I said I was stuck between Tim Scott, Ron DeSantis, and Donald Trump, but I'm probably going to vote for Ron DeSantis in the caucuses. I'll tell you, there was a mix of voters there, and you really also saw the divide in the Republican Party in that room. As Moore was describing the conversations over Israel and the war overseas, you saw some people really liked the more hawkish tone from some of the candidates, and others said, no, we like how some of the candidates were talking about, no, we don't want to have any American involvement or any troops overseas. One point, this is Iowa. When I asked folks in the room to raise their hand if Kim Reynolds' endorsement earlier this week or last week at this point played a factor in uh, or would play a factor in who they would support. Nearly everyone in that room raised their hand. That's good news for Ron DeSantis. But again, things are very fluid. There's still a lot of time until they go into those caucus rooms. So interesting. Shaq Rooster, thank you.